Thank you very much. Um, you can say doing it. it uh, um, should they say the uh, be, talked about being a citizen of Africa? How many people want to be citizens of Africa? Okay, it's your hope. Okay. Okay. So, how many are going to be on the plane to Rwanda tomorrow? <laughs> Fantastic. And um, Ali also talked about you know us understanding the difference between hope and reality, right? Do we remember? Okay, um, a few years ago, well, about six years ago, I decided to step, you know, take the step a little ahead of hope and face the reality that is Africa and, um, and contribute a lot of what I'd learned overseas, in England particularly, um, to Africa. You know, a lot of times when, uh, particularly in the film and cinema industry, a lot of times when people talk about Nigerian film industry or Nollywood, um, they think, and when I say people, I mean a lot of people outside Africa, uh, they think, you know, rubbish, poor quality, crap, right? And, um, and, and also when, when independent, well, international studios, and uh, especially Hollywood, when you, when you talk to them about the Nigerian cinema industry, they think, what? Never heard of it. Um, you know, didn't know it existed. Uh, but um, I, for me, I see, I see a country where there were three cinemas between 2004 and 2008. But well, between 2008 and 2014, at the end of this, this month, we would have added another 18 cinemas in Nigeria. I see a country where a small three-screen cinema in Surulere in Lagos turns over in a, in a year far more money than big multiplexes in England. I see a country where just Nollywood films in the cinemas um, in, in 2013 uh, were turning over a total in a year about $900,000 totally just for Nollywood films. At the end of 2014, we would have topped three, you know, we would have topped uh, three million dollars. So I see, I don't see opportunity anymore, you know, as far as the Nigerian cinema industry is concerned. I see opportunity already being realized. So I see that we're transferring our hope now into, into reality, uh, uh, particularly in the Nigerian uh, cinema industry. But. The reason I asked, you know, how many people want to be citizens of Africa, you know, because I feel, and I speak to a lot of my friends and colleagues and family out here, that um, the thing in your head, the skill, the expertise, the talent in your hand, is very vital, it's very important for Africa, and you must consider it. You know, so what's in your hand? In the last six years, as we face challenges setting up cinemas in Nigeria, I, I asked my colleagues, you know, what's in your hand? We didn't have capital, we didn't have money to set up cinemas, but we had something in our hands. You know, but before I tell you a little bit more about it, the giant strides in the, in, in the cinema industry in Nigeria, let me tell you a little bit about you know, how I've, I've trained myself to regularly recognize um, what I've got in my hands. You know, my name, my full name is Kenechuku Obunia Mbaru. I'm the son of Chukudum Obunia Mbaru of Obuno Otolo Newe in Anambra State. <laughs> you know, you know I, come, I come from a line of leaders of community, people that once they set their minds to something and they know by God's grace they can achieve it, they do achieve it. Yeah. So at the age of 14, in secondary school, St. John's College, Jos, Northern Nigeria, um, I developed a personal motto, and that is learn what it takes, understand what is required, and play a part in implementing what is needed. And that has driven, that has guided me all through my life. Um, but something else happened around that time that kind of changed, had a, another mind shift for me. Um, at about 15, just after I lost uh, my dad, um, I, I was selected uh, in secondary school still. I was selected in a, a number of sports teams. Um, I was very good at football, table tennis, badminton, 
volleyball, 100 meters dash, 400, high jump, you name it, you know? All I had to do, I could be the best in anything I wanted to do. I had no limitations in my mind, you know, achieving anything. Um, so we, we went for some inter-school competition, and uh, a, a colleague of mine, I was sitting on a substitute bench for table tennis at the time, and a classmate asked me, uh, he said, what sports were you selected for? So I reeled out everything, you know? And he turned to me eyeball to eyeball and said, jack of all trade. I thought, okay, that's not bad, you know? <laughs> you know? And he said, master of none. I was crushed. You know, me, master of none, you know? I was one of the best students in school. I could do anything, master of none. That changed my life. I swore in my head at that time, I will never be referred to as master of none again, you know? Um, and so fast forward to uh, 1988, I finished my first degree in Nigeria, moved to England. 1991, I was working at the Odeon Cinema in Swiss Cottage. That was my first, my first stint in, in cinema business. My general manager, my boss's boss's boss, who was a general manager, an Australian folk um, named uh, Richard Linkfoot. He said to me once, after 12 weeks of work, you know how it is, uh, after 12 weeks, we've got to give you a permanent contract. Uh, he said to me, oh, Kenny, uh, Kenny um, uh, <laughs> you know, I told him my name was Kenny Chukwu Bwene Ambara, and he called me Kenny. <laughs> you know? um, so he, he wanted to give me a permanent contract. Um, I said, um, I don't know what a permanent contract is. I'm not interested in a contract. And he was startled, and he said, what are you interested in? I said, your job. I said, I like what you do. I like this business. I, I want to be like you. You know, what do I have to read? What exam do I have to take? You just tell me, I will learn it, I will understand it, and I will do it. You know, so <laughs> Richard said that. And, and so Richard took me on a path um, of, of, of showing me what it took to, to uh, be a cinema manager. And that was my first step. And then I moved on to supervisor, uh, trainee assistant manager, trainee general manager, and in three and a half years of asking Richard that I wanted his job, or telling him I wanted his job, I became the general manager and I became his colleague. So, um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and so, and, and by that appointment, I became the first black general manager in the cinema in the UK. You know? Okay, so, fast forward a little bit more, uh, 2008, after 17 years in Odeon, um, I decided to move, relocate to Nigeria. I'd seen an idea, I'd, I'd got a glimpse of what was hap about to happen or had started happening in Nigeria, in the cinema industry. And, um, and I decided to move back to Nigeria. So myself, some colleagues, Kene Okosa, ex-Odeon ex as well, Peter Balogun, ex-Odeon, Remy Adeanju, ex-Odeon, we packed our bags and moved to Nigeria. Um, and interestingly, Ken, you know, I moved first, and Kenem moved um, a couple of months after me. Uh, interesting, uh, when we started setting up a cinema called Genesis Deluxe Cinemas, in partnership with a, a local Nigerian businessman and my friend, uh, Kenem hadn't come, my colleague, and um, I called him one day uh, before December 2008, and I said to him, I really need you in Nigeria. Just like I've said to you guys, I'm saying to you guys, we need you in Nigeria, we need you in Africa. <laughs> you know, he said to me, when? I said, yesterday. <laughs> Four days later, eight cars were on their way to Heathrow. He moved to Nigeria. Now, this is somebody that was born in England, uh, moved back as a kid, moved, back, uh, moved to Nigeria, and then moved back at the age of 15 to London, and had never been to Nigeria. Um, so I told him that four days later, eight cars were moving tonight to Heathrow with all his property, sold everything. And so we started the journey. But two years later, uh, 2010, the partnership collapsed. Uh, we had set up a cinema called Genesis Deluxe Cinemas, um, and, but the partnership collapsed. Perhaps I didn't quite learn it enough, or understand enough, you know, how to do business in Nigeria, you know. <laughs> You know, you know, jack of all trade, master of none. <laughs> you know, um, it, it was and at that time. That was when my wife Uzo and, and my two kids Jade and Zara were relocating to Nigeria. And as I was welcoming them at the airport, I was telling them, "Oh, by the way, I just I'm just walked I've just walked out of Genesis, the cinema we set up." <sighs> now, 
our staff. A uh, few tears flowed. Um, it, it, it was tough, but we then decided to, to set another chat. Coming back to London was an option, uh, but we, we decided to stay and, and, and set an, you know, on another path. And um, we, we say to ourselves, you know, how do we do this? You know, what's in our hands? We brought out a blank sheet. What's in our hands? Talent. We have talent. Have we done this thing before? Yes. Do we have a God? Yes. <laughs> you know, is this talent required in Nigeria? Yes. Do we have the money? No. <laughs> you know, do we know the banks that can give us the money? Yes. Do we have what the banks require like collateral? No. We say, Che. And, and by, by, <laughs> you know, um, by interpretation, uh, Che means blimey. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> you know, and um, it, it was it was very difficult time for us. I relocated. I, re I relocated Uzo, my wife. She was on a six-figure salary in London. I relocated her. My kids have, were in stable schools. I relocated my colleagues from Odeon, stable job, right, earning a salary, and they came to Nigeria, and we couldn't even pay them. I said to, I said to Kenna and some of the other colleagues, you know, I said, can you take care of yourself for six months in Nigeria? Uh, how long can you take care of yourself? He said six months. That six months turned into four years. <laughs> but we had seen it. You know, and relocating back to London was an option. But like the early explorers to Africa, we had seen it. We had seen the possibilities. We had seen Africa. We had seen the, the, the opportunities. We refused, to, we refused to give up. So film house cinemas and film one distribution were formed. Okay. And um, at the same time, the Nigerian federal government made available $200 million for the entertainment and creative industry. So we went back, talent on a blank sheet, formed some more business plan, went to it, and became the first company in Nigeria to access this fund, and we now started. So December 2012, we launched our first two cinemas in Sule, Lagos, and Calabar in, 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 in South South Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and interestingly, in, interestingly uh, we, at the end of this month, uh, in a few week's time, uh, we will have nine cinemas all together. So we would have opened nine cinemas in two years, employing 300 people. You know, you know, you know. Okay. Yeah. Very importantly, again, um, business multiplier effect that we've created by doing this small thing uh, is at least $5 million per annum. And I'll give you an example. The local printer that prints our weekly film program for every cinema it's 5,000 magazines we print. The popcorn boxes, 5,000 per cinema. This guy, this local printer, you know, I'm so proud of him, you know, people like that. You know, slowly guy before, but now he has like two BMWs. On a, you, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, know? And, you know, I'm thinking of going into printing business as well. <laughs> you know, and um, I'm so proud of him. If I tell him, I'm, you know, I'm doing TEDx, for instance, you know, Film House is doing, you know, supporting TEDx. I need 100 T-shirts. He'll tell me when. I said, tomorrow morning. He said, how much do you want to pay me? I said, I'm not paying you. I'll get 110. Because he knows. He's saying for as long as we're looking to open 25 cinemas in six years, we're going to do it in three and a half years. For as long as you have 25 cinemas or more, he will be a billionaire he, easily. You know? And um, we used to have an account officer, David. Uh, you know, David was working with us. And we do a lot of logistic haulage you know, because we move popcorn, we move everything to different parts of Nigeria. We have a cinema uh, in Suleri, Lagos, Apapa, Lagos, Ikoi, Lagos, opening in a few weeks. We have Calabar Marina. We have uh, uh, Asaba. We have Port Harcourt. Um, and next year, we're opening another 10. You know, um, all, all across Nigeria. Somebody's going to be moving this. Trucks are moving around Nigeria. David got it. David resigned, bought two trucks. <laughs> I'm solving our problem. You know, I, I get, I, I love that. I love that, you know. And um, Sule, Sule is our tailor, right? Sule knows that in things we do, we like to look good. So he hooks up, up with stuff like this, you know? you know? And I tell you what Sule does, you know, every, just before every holiday, maybe every quarter, he comes to the office. He says, oh, guy, okay, I want to come greet you. Yeah. 
And then he comes with a lot of materials. <laughs> you know, smart guy, you know. And, um, and you know, by the time he leaves the office, he'll be making another at least 20 for people in the office. You know, that's business multiply effects. I haven't talked about the taxes. I haven't talked about the, you know, the, the all sorts of things. And, um, and for me, that is Africa. You know, we also had other people join us, you know, um, from the diaspora and different, you know, Ola Jumoke uh, Bamboye, financial consultant, um, Don Omope, you know, television producer. He's joining us in January. Um, uh, Akin Jaloso, he was a GM at Sainsbury. He joined us two, weeks ago, uh, two months ago. Um, Craig Sean. Craig Sean was the director of Odeon and also Hollywood Studio. He was the vice president of, of Sony Pictures. You know, he just left Nigeria two days ago. He's joined us already. You know, so, you know, Chris Atkinson from Liverpool. You know, uh, Chris Atkinson does a lot of our sound and projection stuff. He's in Nigeria right now, you know. Um, so it's, you know, we see it. We see the opportunities. We're changing things there in that space. And I tell you, in two years' time, you know, the film producers that are in Nollywood and, and indeed connected with Nigeria, you know, they, once they release their films, they'll be making a, a lot of money. And for us, that's, that's the pride and joy. We create this little thing, but the multiplier effect around it is huge. You know, so, so ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I would really like to encourage you to consider what's in your hands and the value of what's in your hand to Nigeria. You know, consider the impact you can make Nigeria. Yes, it is frustrating. Oh, sorry, when I say Nigeria, I mean Africa. You know, but you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, you know, hint, hint. <laughs> you know, you know. Um, it, you know. It, it, is, it is frustrating, you know. Um, there's a time I was so challenged, you know, when, I, when, we, when, we, when our partnership collapsed at Genesis before we started Film House. I was so challenged, you know. You know, when as a man, you know, as a provider, as a father, as a leader, you're absolutely at zero level, you know, and, and you have all these people depending on you. People have moved to Nigeria depending on you. You know, you've got your family depending on you. You've got to make a decision. But I've seen it. I refused, to, just like the early explorers, I refused to take my eyes away from that possibility and from, from those, those realities. And I chose to stay in Nigeria. You know, so what inspires me? I'm inspired by the story of two biblical characters. David. When David went to face the giant Goliath, yeah, David only said one thing. You know, he said, I've not fought a giant before, basically. But I've, I've, fought, a, I've fought a lion and I've fought a bear with my slingshot, and so I can take on this giant. I'm inspired by the story of Joseph. He got a vision and a dream that he'll be king. The minute he got that, he was thrown into all sorts of prisons. But one thing took him, you know, kept him going, his talent. He had a talent to tell, to interpret vision. The same thing took him to the king, Pharaoh, and he became governor. You know, so I'm inspired by all that. I'm inspired by the early explorers. You know, when they got into the shores of Nigeria and Africa, they met a jungle. They took off their dicky bow ties, put on their Wellington boots, you know, got their cutlasses and their machetes and went into the jungle. But they didn't take their focus away from the gold, the diamond, the... Ma the <laughs> 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 you, know, you know, so, you know, so it is, I, when I go back to Nigeria, I don't expect air conditioners. I don't expect Leicester Square. I don't expect Piccadilly Circus. I expect a jungle. Now, when I get to, now, when I get to Nigeria and I see a Ferrari, Hallelujah. <laughs> you, know, you know, so it, it's, it's, I would like to encourage you to consider what you got in your hand. Africa needs your talent. Um, it can be frustrating, yes. It is challenging, yes. It is tough, yes. But it's also exciting and rewarding. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>